We're in chapter 1. All living organisms have those characteristics. They respond, they grow, they reproduce. And they also can move. And they also have metabolism. That's the uh, use the food to produce energy. To study AMP, we have the anatomical approach and physiological approach. Anatomy is like studying a new language. Anatomical study is studying the name. Physiology is ask you how it works. So they have different approaches. And gross anatomy is you use your eye, you look at this object, you identify what's the name of this, what's the name of that. That's gross anatomy. It can be divided into the surface, regional, systemic anatomy. And in this class, we're going to use microscope. Microscope is like a big magnifier. And we use microscope to study cytology. Cytology is study individual cells. And we're going to spend time to talk about histology. Histology is study a lot of cells together. And a lot of cells together, we call them tissues. So we totally have four different kinds of tissues in this histology. And physiology is study the function. So we can study the function of the cell, how they work, how they survive. And we can focus on uh, specific organs, specific uh, organ systems, or study the disease, pathological physiology. And the living organism is built up from the small, I call the Lego, small Lego. And gradually you build up, become a bigger one, and you use them as the building block and be building a bigger, uh, bigger molecule. So it's built up from uh, molecular and gradually go to the organism. So uh, we in chapter two we we'll study chemistry. Chemistry are those small building block atoms, and we we'll put them together, and use to have the cell. And we will study the cell in chapter three. Then you put a lot of cells together, we call them tissues. Tissues are made of four uh, uh, different kinds of cells, more than one kind of cell. And in your body, you have totally four different kinds of tissues. And when you put tissues together, you start to have organ. And you put more than one organ together, this organ system. So in unit one, we will talk about this part. And from unit two, that's the fun part, we will talk about the whole body, we have different organ systems. And all these organ systems may uh, create you. In your body, you have 11 totally different organ systems. And we'll spend the whole semester talk about these 11 different organ systems. Integumentary, and that's your skin. Skin is a big, big organ. It's the biggest organ you have in your body. It covers your body, produce uh, protection. And we'll talk more about it uh, later. And your skeletal system, that's your bone. And it works together with the muscular system. So skeletal system and muscular system work hand in hand, create movement. And in unit three, we'll talk about the nervous system. So that's the system for long distance communication. You control different body parts and that's the nervous system. And also the endocrine system is also a long distance communication. So the nervous system and the endocrine system are the two long distance communication system in your body. And this release hormones. So all these glands release hormones. Then in unit four, our big topic, cardiovascular system. And that's the system sent oxygen to your whole body. And Lymphatic system, that's the system for your immune function. And also your body fluid, when your uh, body fluid comes from your capillary, it go to the peripheral tissue. We call them uh, extracellular fluid, ECF. And this fluid will be picked up by the lymphatic system and go back to your circulation. So it works to help the cardiovascular system. Your respiratory system, its function is to bring the oxygen from the outside into the lung. 
and after it go to the lung, the oxygen will be carried by your blood to your tissue. So your respiratory system work hand in hand with your cardiovascular system. In Unit 5, we'll also talk about the digestive system. And this the system start from your mouth to your anus. This is a long tube. It's a 9 meters long tube for digestion function. And inside the tube, we consider it's outside of your body. So you need to have absorption to take nutrients from the inside to your body. That's absorption. And also in Unit 5, we'll talk about the uh, urinary system, the renal system. So that's the system filter your blood and you create a clean blood. And if this system fail, you have to use, do the dialysis, use the external machine to clean your blood. And after they clean your blood, uh, the waste particle become urine. So it will go from the kidney and go to your bladder and you pee them out. So your urine directly come from your blood. And the last one, reproductive system. And all the previous 10 systems, male, female, they're the same. But this one is sexually dimorphic. And that's the big word to say the male and female are different. So the male reproductive, female reproductive systems, they're different. And also, this is the only one system. You can take the whole system out and you won't affect your normal physiological function. So it means you can live without this system. And that's the unique part of this, this system. It's designed to produce, uh, produce baby for the human species. So that will be our last chapter, reproductive system. And your body wants to maintain a stable environment. And the ability to be able to maintain a stable environment called homeostasis. It could be your body temperature. It could be your ions concentration. Ions are the uh, charged particle. The salt dissolving water become ion. Could be your blood sugar. And to maintain something, you need to have a negative feedback mechanism. You need to have a receptor to pick up the signal. And you need to have a factor to uh, do something to regulate homeostasis. A good example is your uh, room temperature. So in your, bar, in, your, in your house, you set up the temperature to 70 degrees. And you have the receptor. The thermometer will pick up the temperature. And if the temperature goes too high, it will go to the control center, that's the thermal state on your wall. And the thermal state, that's the control center, it will do something. It will go to the output part. And the output part, we call the E-factor, that's a big compressor outside of your house. So it will start to operate. When you start to operate, it brings the house temperature back to normal. And this is a negative feedback mechanism. It means when it goes up, you can bring it down. And in your body, you have a lot of negative feedback loop. Its function is to, to maintain your blood sugar, maintain your body temperature, maintain your ions concentration. It all goes through negative feedback. And this is what happened in your body. This time it's not 70 degrees, it's 98.6 Fahrenheit. And if your body temperature goes too high, it was, you have the receptor pick up the signal and it was sent to your control center, that's your brain. And your control center will go to the E-factor, so you're going to sweat, and when you sweat, your body temperature drops. That's the response. So very similar concept, negative feedback, be able to maintain it. And maintain, if your body temperature goes too low, this time you want to bring it up. So if you feel cold, you, well, you are shivering, and that's what happens. So this time the control center will go to your skeletal muscle, ask your skeletal muscle to contract. When you contract, its side effect is produce heat, and that's the purpose of shivering. You produce heat to heat up your body. And because of this negative feedback mechanism, your body temperature is well maintained. So your body has a lot of negative feedback loop to maintain your body temperature, to maintain your homeostasis. So in your body, everything wants to be a stable environment. Let's take a short break. <laughs>